Welcome, everybody, to the Massachusetts Legacy League's post-game show. I'm your host, Owen Reed. I'm joined today by John and Jay, the two interns this year. And we had three games here in week two, and we're going to discuss all of them and talk a little bit about the future. Most of the game, two of the games went down to the wire. One of them was a blowout, but we're going to focus on the game that went down to just one point. First game, the RI Wave versus DTMB. RI Wave won 82 to 81. And the final sequence was definitely the reason why the RA Wave stole this victory. DTMB had led for most of this game, and they had the momentum. And then right at the end, RA Wave came back and stole it. So we were going to talk about that. But the main play that caused all this momentum shift was Cody Crawford's and one right at the end. John, you you were there at the game. You saw it all happen. What are, what are your thoughts on Cody Crawford and how that and one really impacted this game? Um, I really think it set the tone for the ending of the game. As soon as that and one went in, uh, the offensive ability of RI Wave just completely shifted the game, and they ended up taking it back. You know, beginning of the first half of the game, they were up. Um, they were holding a strong lead, but that third quarter, they just got killed. Um, I think it was, let's see here, they scored um, – DTMB scored 29 points in the third quarter to um, RI Wave's 10 points. So they took the lead from there, and, you know, they needed – RI Wave needed to, you know, shift that momentum that uh, DTMB was was holding. And with that and one, it really shifted it and uh, gave them the ability to come back not only defensively but offensively and uh, take the lead and win the game. Absolutely. DTMB, this game was all about runs. DTMB had it in the first, then it was they lost in the second, had it again in the third. And it was all about runs, but that third quarter in particular, Jay, the third quarter DTMB came out and they played great defensively. They only gave up 10 points. How were they able to do that? Uh, I think DTMB was able to do that due to the way their team focused on defense in that quarter. I think they definitely stepped up from how they played last week. I know they're new to the league. And I think that first game they played, they weren't completely sure about defense or realized the emphasis of defense. And they had, and I think they were able to pull together more this week and really lock them down for that. Absolutely. Just, absolutely. Just to throw out a couple stats, Ethan Austin, again, the leading scorer for DTMB. He's played in this league before. What do you think his leadership towards the rest of this team is really helpful? That's a question for either of you. Either one can jump in. Um, you know, being on the side and uh, watching the game, he's definitely a loud player. He, you know, he presents himself as a leader for the team. Uh, he's making call outs. He's making sure that, you know, DTMB is on the same page as what plays they want to throw down or what really they want to do in the next quarter. And I think, him as a player um, and not only as just a leader for the team is, is so great for them. You know, this was a tough game. Um, you know, like our wave has a bunch of uh, great players from the other, le- uh, other leagues coming in and, you know, they're finally starting to become cohesive and figure out, you know, how to play with each other. So um, for him to, you know, score 33 points and really I'm more impressed with how he presents himself on the court and how he, carries uh, his team with him. So really, he, I think he did a fantastic job. And I think he's DTMB is going to do very well later on. Absolutely. And then Jay, both both Devon Pina for the RI Wave and then Joey Niederberger, they both went down with an injury in this game. So how do you think the players that don't really play as much really stepped up towards the end of this game to make it A, interesting, and then B, for the RI Wave players able to pull away with a win? Uh, yeah, so it's no secret there was injuries on both these teams. There was – the game stopped and they came out, and you can tell from looking at the um, box scores that almost everyone on the team had to get in and fill in and pick up where they were slacking from those injuries. Um, I think it definitely helps, as you were saying, Austin Ethan – he was able to kind of command them and to keep the morale high through the injuries, which I think mm-hmm. you can definitely tell from the D- team DTMB. Absolutely. Now we're going to move on to the other games. 
this one we're going to talk about next is the Immortals versus Reapers. This was a 56-45 game, and the Reapers ended up pulling away with the win. So we want to talk about that one and how the Reapers were able to get the win over the Immortals. So ma- mainly Kevin Views, we saw him last week. We see him again this week. He plays great in both those games. Tonight he shot 50 – or last night, rather, he shot 50%. And the Reapers were able to um, get an 11-point win. However, the Immortals, they made it scary in that third quarter. They they came back they came back and they made it a lot closer than it should have been. And the Reapers had to buckle down, play great defense, and ultimately get their win. But the first question is gonna to go to you, John. The Immortals, how are they they came out of that half with guns blazing? How how do they do that? Um, I think that really contributes to uh turnovers. They were really able to force uh, turnovers um, and get foul calls on them uh, to score some extra points. Uh, But yeah, turnovers killed the, uh, um, killed the Reapers. The Reapers had a total of 12 turnovers that game. Um, Six actually coming from views. And I think, you know, they were in that um, going into the second half, you know, they were able to really pull that off and um, be able to etch their way back and, keep this game close and be defensively with rebound. So. And then Jay, I'm going to let you take this in any direction. This game, it was the score tells you an 11 point game, but it really felt like it was a three or four point game all the way through. And the Reapers pulled away in the end, but show some love to the immortals. They, a lot of their players at least got in the box score. They didn't really have a leading score. They were very evenly distributed. What is, what about the Immortals do you like? And in the future, what do you think they're going to be able to do against some of these other teams in the league? Uh, yeah, I think the Immortals did a great job spreading out the ball because they don't – without that key player, you kind of need to rely on each other to score. And looking at the box where you can see there was two guys with 12 points and following the below them, the rest of it, the team, everyone was getting the ball, everyone was scoring – it's what you like to see out of a team when there's not one main guy putting up 20, 30 points each game, such as um, Views, who was the leading scorer for Reapers the last two weeks. If you don't really have a guy like that, that's when you need the team to really step up and play together. Absolutely. And I don't think the Immortals played bad. I think the Reapers were just able to hone it in in that fourth quarter. After a, after a bad third quarter, they were able to hone it in and really just take advantage and get the win. And like you said, they they were really sloppy early, John. You said they were sloppy. They had 12 turnovers. But towards the end, I feel like they probably only had one or two turnovers in that fourth, fourth quarter. All the turnovers were early. So that gave them a hole, and they eventually were able to climb out of it. And then for this last game we want to talk about, it was the uh, the mob versus the party crashes. Party crashes is a very fun team to watch. However, they did not get their first win of the year. The mob goes to 2-0. and And we want to talk about how the mob is just one of one of the better teams, one of the bigger teams in the league, and how how this is a team that a lot of people are probably going to fear come come playoff time. The mob they get a twenty point win, and the first half it was it was kind of close, but then the mob really turned it up in that set in that third quarter, and that's been the theme with all three of these games. The third quarters are very crucial coming out of the half. So I'm going to go to you first, Jay. What in the third quarter did the mob do to really just put the party crashes to bed? Sorry about that. Having some trouble with the mic. Um, The mob in the third quarter was really able to step up, scoring more than double the points as the party crashers. And I think they were able to do that with help from Daquan Durham specifically. He obviously was the leading scorer of the mob with 23 points, and he was able to grab – he had 16 total rebounds, 14 of them being defensive, which I think when you have the force like that and you're getting that many rebounds, it definitely helps mob keep possession of the ball. And I felt like during this game, it was – the, the mob had constant possession. Absolutely. And then in terms of the party crashers, John, Kevin Flynn was able to keep him afloat. He scored 26 points. What what do the rest of the party crashers need to do to help to help Kevin and the team get their first win of the year? 
Yeah, Kevin Flynn. Uh, uh, he's still a demon under the rim. Um, but, you know, you can't really always rely on just one person to score your points. This game, he had 26 points. The game before, he had 35. But, you know, I think um, the rest of his team were just really lacking on shooting. Um, specifically, uh, Nick Barry. He played well, but he just was having a tough time shooting. He had like a 60.7% field goal um, percentage. And, you know, I thought they did very well. On rebounds and really being able to um, get those rebounds and keep them in the game. But, you know, they were struggling outside the line and inside, you know. But Mob's a tough team. Um, They got big guys like – like uh, Daquan Durham and Sebastian Delone, who are just big bodies under the net, they'll force you in. They'll box you out. They'll um, they'll make sure they get those rebounds and score off of you. So I mean, they just need to make sure you know they work on their shooting and um, try to make try to create more openings uh, on their offense. Um, you know, because it, it seemed like most of the time it was Kevin Flynn making those um, openings for his offense himself. And I think his team needs to come together and really try to work on making it as is their team making the openings instead of just one person. Absolutely. And next week, the party crashes, they get the RI wave, who we talked about earlier in this podcast. The RI wave is a great team. Party crashes. Jay, what are they, what are they going to have to do to get their first win over the RI wave? I think the party crashers need to, um, I think Kevin Flynn, as great a player as he is, I think he needs to tr- rely a little more and trust the rest of the guys on the party crashers. You can see that the second top scorer on their team, team Sean Galvin, he only had nine points being the second scorer, but he was shooting 80%. When you have a teammate that's putting up field goal percentage like that, I feel like something that can be key is really making sure to spread the ball around and let him keep going if he has a percentage like that. Absolutely. And like you mentioned earlier there, John, Nick Barry, he didn't shoot well. He makes a couple more of those shots, and this is definitely a game. So I totally agree with both of you there. But the mob, one of the scarier teams in this league, and I'm going to go back to you, John. The mob, they they next week, they play the Reapers with, um, with Kevin Buse. How are they going to be able to stop Kevin Buse, and how are they going to be able to get their third win and stay undefeated? Um. I think it's going to be a lot tougher because, you know, Party Crashers, um, as much as I love them, they're a lot smaller team. Um, They're not as big bodied. Uh, Reapers, they've got a lot of great shooters. um, So it's really, um, it's going to be man-to-man defense, um, making sure that they're blocking those openings. And um, it's going to be tougher for, you know, uh, Durham and DeLone to really get into uh, into and under the rim because you know they got they got guys um, the Reapers got guys that are a lot bigger or just as big so um, they're really going to have to space out their offense and you know try to look for more openings instead of you know just uh, forcing their way to the rim. Absolutely. Now we're going to jump into a little bit of a future. I'm going to get you guys' picks for next week, and then we're going to talk about a team that we that we all love and who we expect to go far in the playoffs. I know we're only in week three, but this is where you make the bold choices and then you check back and you see if they paid off. So a quick little pick them. We've got the immortals and DTMB next week. Jay, who do you got and why? Um, I definitely got, did you say it was the Reapers and MOB? Uh, D, uh, DTMB and immortal. Sorry. Oh, uh, I'm going to go DTMB. DTMB. Yeah, I really like their team. I think they have great um, – they work great together. They have good chemistry, and I think that will help them pull it up, pull it up away. What about you, John? Who's winning DTMB versus Immortals? Um, I got to give this to DTMB uh, and, uh, you know, give a quick shout-out to Joey Niederberger. You know, I know he got injured this this week. But uh, I'm looking at him being a uh, defensive monster this year. Uh, even before he got injured, he had like seven blocks. Uh, or not seven, but he had, uh, he had. let's see here. 
It felt it felt like seven yeah, blocks. Yeah, it felt like seven I got blocks. You. He had three steals and then he had uh, two blocks, but he he got injured about like the third quarter. But I believe he's if he comes back and you know he's feeling healthy, um, they're gonna uh, the Immortals are gonna have a tough time um, putting up shots and really getting to the rim. You know, having a guy like Niederberger underneath. So, and you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just an offensive weapon. Have a bunch of offensive weapons, so it's going to be tough. All right, I'm going right back to you. R.I. Wave Party Crashers, who you got? Um, I would say for R.I. Wave Party Crashers, I got to give it to R.I. Wave. Um, you know, first week they struggled, uh, but seeing them the second week, uh, it's definitely clear that they're a really good team. Um, and that they have very good players and they know they're starting to get the um, build and mesh together and become um, a great team. So it's party crashers as much as I love watching them. Um, I think they're going to have a tough time with our wave. Um, and I think, as we said before, they're, they're going to have to spread out their offense and, you know, not just rely on Kevin Flynn to push in and make some crazy layups. So, Absolutely. What about you, Jay? Wave versus Party Crashers? Uh, I'm going to go Rhode Island Wave as well. I feel like as a team, especially this week, they proved to us that they really have got that grit and they can definitely win games. I honestly think that week one might have just been a little fluke, but I think they're a team that I'm really going to look out for this season. All right, and I'll go back to you for this last one. Reapers versus Mob, what do you have and why? Uh, I got Mob. And the, the mob has scored 165 points and allowed 115 points this season, while mm-hmm. the um, the Reapers have 125 points scored and 110 allowed. The, the mob is able to just get these leads and just take off. And I think they haven't, they haven't shown any weakness so far this season. And I think they're going to continue the dominance by winning over the Reapers next week. I'm sure the mob, mob will love that, saying they have no weakness. Um, I'm going to go back to you, John, your final pick and why. Yeah, I got to I gotta agree with Jay and, and go with Mob. Uh, this one is going to be a tough one, but also a fun, great, uh, fun game to watch. Uh, Reapers, they're starting to become – kind of my favorite uh you know kevin views he's great um but mob is just they're just so well-rounded um they've got so many offensive weapons and defensive not only can they prove themselves to score up to like over 15 points but they can also put up numbers on blocks and steals and and rebounds so uh it's it's going to be tough for the reapers to really put a dent into mob but um i think it's going to be a great game Absolutely. So you guys both picked the same for everything. DTMB, RI Wave, and Mob. I'm sure they're, they are going to love you guys. Immortals, Party Crashes, and Reapers. Probably not, not the biggest fans of you guys right now, but that's okay. Maybe they'll prove you guys wrong. But I will have to agree with, all, with you guys on those picks as well. And now I'm going to go to both of you. One team that you think is just is going to be going to be a problem come playoff time. And I'll give you a hint. Joey always wants you to suck up to him and say the RI Wave and just say he's the best player, he's great, he's not here right now, you don't have to suck up. So I'll go to you first, John. Which team is going to be dangerous come playoff time? Uh, you can suck up if you want, but you don't. Well, have to. I was going to say, you know, week one, I don't know. I wouldn't say our way, but, you know, see in the week two, they look they look really good. Um, you know, and uh, shout out to Joey's two threes in a row. But, um yeah, they, they're becoming way more cohesive, and I, I think, you know, they, these are all great players from the other leagues, um, and seeing them start to come together and kind of build that foundation for the team is is really fun to watch, and uh, especially last game, you know, that the last couple of minutes to come back and score and win by one was was unreal to watch. So um, I think our wave are going to be, uh, be one of the teams to beat in the playoffs. I'm sure Joey's going to have his headphones in listening to this in a couple of days, and he's going to be smiling ear to ear. You got yourself some brownie points. But what about you, Jay? What team is dangerous come playoff time? I think come playoff time, 
a few weeks from now, I think DTMB is going to really step up. They, I'm not saying they haven't been playing great this season. They've, they're off to a strong start. But I think give them a few weeks, let them learn the league, let them learn how each other play. I think they are really going to be a force to be reckoned with. And RI Wave, I do agree they have that. They've been playing to forever. They've played in Rhode Island. They know what they're doing. I think DTMB just needs a few weeks, and they're going to be a serious contender. I also do think that Mob isn't going to let up. I think they're going to be yeah. come playoffs. I think they. I mean, we haven't seen much, but I expect them to be dominating the same way in playoffs. Yeah, I know it's a long way from now, but absolutely. And that's that's impressive for DTMB. They are a free agent team this year because I heard uh, Ethan was yelling at all throughout the game. He was like, "Free agents." And I mean, to say they're going to be a horse come playoff time is definitely, definitely a tip of the cap to them. But that's all we have today for this week's post game show. Come back for week three's post game show next week. Massachusetts signing off. I'm Owen. That's Jay, and that's Sean. See you guys later.